Hey guys, welcome back to some more NRL Supercoach. It's going to be round four, team list Tuesday reaction. I already know that there is an absolute massive amount of carnage. <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's, uh, there's, there's players dropping out left, right, and center. So we're going to get in. I know a bunch of the players out, but I don't know who's actually replacing everyone yet. So... I'm keen to see, um, you know, there could be some traps that pop up. There could be some genuine uh, potential options. But for the Roosters, Roosters Penrith, uh, both missing a couple of players. Lindsay Collins, Anson, and Smith both out. So, I mean, I guess it's good timing. Luke Keary is fit to return, which is, which is good. The back line is as you would expect. Uh, Terrell May comes into the starting lineup, which is which is great. I mean, I think that just means he's going to play a few extra minutes. I don't think he's going to play. Well, I don't know. <laughs> he could he could he could play as much as 70, 80, Honestly, he could go all day. But uh, you know, everybody should probably have Terrell May by now. Tupanua still there. Nat Butcher, uh, Connor Watson, and Angus Crine with Egan Butcher coming onto the bench. So still no. See a Wong, so obviously, yeah, he was, I, I, I don't know, it, it could still be a bit of a rotation, but, I mean, Angus Crichton, I did think was pretty good when he came off the bench last week, so I'm not surprised, and I mean, Connor Watson, it would have been interesting to see if Sandon Smith would have gone back to 14, but like, surely, like, strong Roosters team, Connor Watson is your 14, like, he is, Sandon Smith, good young player, but... Connor Watson's an absolute gun, and he can play so many different positions. So he's he is legitimately the perfect number fourteen in any team. He he's that good. Uh, and then the Panthers. So let's have a look. No, uh, Cleary obviously. So Brad Schneider comes in, who was signed. He was obviously at the Raiders, but did he play in the Super League last year? Is that where he was? Am I misremembering that? But, uh, I mean, I always thought he was pretty good when he, when he played for the Raiders for a, for a bit there. It'll be interesting to see how they go without Cleary. And, uh, and Lua will have to stand up a little bit more. <clears throat> Excuse me. Obviously, the back line is still terrific. The forward pack, Lindsey Smith comes in. Obviously, Fisher-Harris is still out. Um, and Luke Garner comes in for Scott Sorensen. I don't know how long he's out for. Maybe a few weeks. I think it was, I think it was tipped to be. Dane Laurie still the fourteen. Maverick Gaia, obviously a touted young gun coming through, makes his debut off the bench. I mean, it's it's probably just good signs for Liam Henry. I th I think, I think he's in for another good minute game here. So. Good there. I mean, it's good for our Liam Henry and Terrell May owners, I would say. Anything else? I mean, it, I mean, this, the fact Cleary and now Sorensen and Fisher Harris are out, it does make getting Dom Young much more appealing. Like, I talked about this in the review that I, even with Penrith this game, I was still very tempted by Dom Young, even if it was going to be a basically full strength Panthers outfit. You were just going to bring him in and expect like a bit of a lower score. But like, I I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't think the Roosters are going to like pump them, but like surely <laughs> they got to win. You, you can't, you can't be losing this game, right? I mean... It's still a it's still a good Panthers team, don't get me wrong. But it does it does make Dom Young much more more appealing. I think he is potentially uh, a bit more likely to score well. I'm not saying he will, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see. It's going to be interesting for sure. I yeah, I don't know. I think the end of the day, Penrith still have their structures. They're still very strong defensively, um, but just the just the controlling and um, yeah, I mean, just not having clear there is going to be a, a massive uh, out. And also a couple of their big forwards. So, Roosters forward pack, very strong. Penrith, it does the job, but it is looking a little weak if you're if you're being honest. But, uh, yeah, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. We have the Rabbitohs Bulldogs. So, I think... I don't think there's actually too much to talk about in this one. Yeah, um... 
it looks like, yeah, Dean Hawkins is still in the seven jersey. Obvi I mean, they obviously weren't going to bring Ilias back after one week. It would have looked a little foolish, even though they got pumped last week. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I, I, I didn't really think Hawkins proved, like, you know, first game of the season, like, it's hard to be harsh on him when there's a lot of other issues. But I, I don't know. Is he really adding that much more than Ilias? Like, I... I honestly think he's not much different, but Ilias is just a stronger defender. But yeah, I don't know. There's there's more than there's more issues than that, obviously. But the back line is the same. I thought there was word that maybe Tane Mill would be dropped for Thompson. Obviously, no Gagai still, unfortunately. Ah, oh, what do you what do you do wrong, man? I thought Gagai was was really solid. I thought he's really solid, but I don't know. You know, I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he knows better than us, I guess. Um, then the forward pack. So, Damien Cook starts. Uh, where is... Okay, so no Havili. He's been he's been dropped? That's interesting. I... I yeah, very strange. I, I, I mean, I don't think you could say really any of the Rabbitohs for... Uh, players at all played well last week i mean you'd always say cameron murray does a couple other guys i'm sure put in but i don't think Havili was i i can't really remember obviously he started last week to sort of take the brunt out of the game yeah interesting interesting um yeah but i guess good for anyone that owns cook he should be playing 80 minutes now Forward pack, obviously, Jacob Hoss still in the back row. Tellus Duncan still on the bench. Michael Cheekham comes into the 14 jersey. Yeah, Cook is definitely going to play 80 minutes in this one. And then the Doggies, I think they're 1-17. to Obviously had a very good win last week. It's going to... Oh, fuck. This game, this game is going to be just... I, I don't... I, this is like one cat... I have no idea who I'm going to tip in this one because obviously... Uh, the rabbits have been crap, and they've been flogged. But the dogs, like, you know, they, they, they've been okay, I guess. Like, they, they've definitely improved. They had a big win against a dreadful Titans team. So, you know, they're going to be confident, and people are going to... I mean, people aren't stupid. They're not going to act like they're, they're a top eight team or top four team. But, uh, I don't know, coming up against a very poor rabbits team, I still think... The Rabbitohs are going to be better than them, but I don't know. I, I honestly, I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be a very interesting game. Uh, can the Doggies continue the confidence? But uh, we'll see. I mean, I do like their back line. I like Connor Tracy on the wing. I got to be honest, I I, <laughs> I know everyone loves Ado Car, but I, I think Ado Car is fairly overrated, and uh, I actually think Connor Tracy does. A, uh, a bit of a more solid job uh, defensively and with ball and like just the tough carries. Obviously, doesn't quite have the X factor of an Ado car, but okay, I don't know. I think Ado car is a little overrated, if I'm honest. Uh, Matty Byrne, Drew Hutchinson still in the halves, obviously. Forward pack, so okay, so yeah, Liam Knight still in the 10 jersey. Kick out Preston Salmon. Bench, yeah, the same. Same as last time, so that means. I mean, Adokar is on the extended. Farmer Silly, obviously not back. I, I mean, I don't even know. Like, I thought it was just a head knock. It, it was a pretty nasty head clash. So, I didn't see any word that he had, like, a broken cheekbone or something like that. But I was sort of hoping he wouldn't get back into the team. And, I mean, Liam Knight, I think, was was good enough up front. So, yeah. I, <laughs> I gotta be honest, I'm like, okay, fine. Like, I'm, I'm not too concerned if Farmer Silly doesn't make it back into the into the side. I mean, yeah, if he can make cash, of, of course, I'd like to have him, but it does just have one less goddamn nothing score in the team for, for like, a loop potential. But uh, I guess poor old uh, Sam Hughes is doing a, a bad enough job of that as is. But, yeah, the rest of it, standard. I mean, Karen... I don't know, still on the bench, I don't, I don't really understand, like, yeah, they had a good win, but I still think Karen is just a better option to start at lock and play bigger minutes, like, he is still playing big minutes off the bench through the middle, but, like, I don't, I, I still don't like the way they're using the bench, I mean, Karen comes on, plays big minutes, but then Sam Hughes doesn't get on until, like, the second half some weeks, 
Then you have Curtis Moran, who plays like very minimal minutes. Kurt Mann comes on. I, I don't know. It's a bit of a strange rotation. I just don't. I just don't think Semin is that good. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I, I still Karen. Still don't know. To yeah, I don't. I, I, I'm still not that high about bringing Karen in. Honestly, I, I don't think I'm. I don't think there's a lot of stuff to deal with this week. And I, I think Karen is just. He's probably one of these mid-range guys that's just going to let let slip. I mean, if he gets the dual front row status, yeah, it, w it would be nice to have him, but I just don't... I didn't see the urgency to bring Curran in. If you started with him, fantastic, but he's just... I don't know, too many, like... I mean, he's scoring better than probably most of the mid-range back rowers, but it is what it is. Uh, next game, Broncos v Cowboys. Fuck. Um, obviously, bad news. Brendan Piacora is now out with a ankle injury. Uh, I don't know the latest. I heard that it could be up to a month, though, which... <laughs> it just... Oh, it just never ends. It never ends. The goddamn... The injuries in the back row, man. It just never ends. Obviously, Reese uh, Walsh is gone for a good six weeks. I mean... You know what I mean? I, I think Tristan Saylor is an absolute gun. He's an absolute jet. So, I, I, Reese Walsh is a massive loss, but Tristan Saylor is too good not to be playing NRL. So, it's fantastic to see him. And I think he'll do a, a, a fantastic job. Um, Backline is the same. Obviously, Cobo moves back to the centers. I mean, he was in the centers last week anyway. Uh, Adam Reynolds has been named, so he is back. I mean, again, I guess keep an eye on late mail. He could be a late scratching. I don't, I, it's one of those type of injuries, I, w I would assume. Uh, front row. So, Fletcher Baker starts in the front row. I've got to be honest, I've been very, very unimpressed with Fletcher Baker. I think he is... <laughs> I think he is. I think he is below par, but uh, that's all I'll say. Give him a couple more weeks, but I'm um, not. Uh, yeah, I'm. Not, I'm not. Uh, I'm not seeing it. I'm definitely not seeing it. I think Corey Jensen has been pretty, pretty good up front. Doing. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I honestly, I've been, I've been impressed with Corey Jensen. Jaden Hunt comes in for Pia Cora. I, I thought Hunt was actually really good in the trials when he played. So, you know, decent replacement. Um. John Ricky, Pat Carrigan, Xavier Willison. Okay, Kobe Hetherington, Smoothie, and Corey Oates comes into the 17 with no Martin Tapa, which is which is good. I mean, honestly, I I think we've all been calling for it, right? Like you, I mean, personally, I think, and this is why I say with the Roosters having Connor Watson, he's so damn good. He he covers so many positions, and even like at a pinch, I'm sure he could play in the centers. But the Broncos, like I've been. Fucking losing it at uh, Kevin Walters picking like a dummy half and then three middle forwards on the bench. It just provides no cover. Now, obviously, not every game you're gonna get it. You're going to get an injury, and, and the Broncos have been pretty unlucky pretty much every game so far in the season. But like, you have to have somebody that can cover another position. And uh, Corey Oates, I think honestly, I, I think he's a very, very good interchange player because he's big enough he's strong enough he could come on through the forwards i don't think he could play big minutes in the forwards obviously there was a, a number of years years ago where he was wanting to shift to the to the pack i don't know if he necessarily wanted to but um the coaches were sort of wanting him to i, I don't know if he necessarily did but uh, it didn't really work out but he's still big enough he's still strong enough he can do a job through the middle or on the edge and then he covers the outside backs if there's an injury. It's just it just makes a much more balanced team. I mean, he's not the most ideal like replacement, like utility, but he's he he'll do the job if needed. So I like that a lot. Uh, the Cowboys, um, they're one to seventeen. I think. Well, actually, no. Zach Labor comes back in, which is good for them. The rest of it, very very uh, solid. Finny Fuiaki, obviously he passes, yeah, he passes HIA, so he was good to go this week. And then the bench is the same. I mean, the Cowboys have had a pretty good start, and now they get to, you know, 
get to take on a very understrength Broncos. So it could be, <laughs> I don't know. This, you know, the Broncos are going to turn up, and obviously the Reynolds, if Reynolds plays, it's a big in. But man, they they are they are down on some firepower. It's gonna be it's going to be a tough uh, tough matchup for the for my Bronx, but uh, we'll see. Moving on, we have got the Dragons and Sea Eagles. I don't think there's too much here either. There's what. There's one player I am keen to see. Uh, ben Murdoch Masilla is out. I don't know if that's injury or not, but he was awful last week. <laughs> he, he was absolutely atrocious when he played. Uh, the rest of it is how you would expect. Um, so yeah, Eisenhuth still at lock. Sua, Leilua. Then you got Marshke. DeBellin goes back to the bench. Hame Sale comes in. That's a huge in. I, I've been a big fan of Sale for a long time. He just, he just, he's one of those players you just can't seem to stay fit. But man, he's a good player. And then for Tyler Mariner. So it's, I mean, it's a pretty strong bench, honestly. The Dragons. They got a, I mean, all things considered, it's a, it's a pretty strong forward pack. Like they, I don't know. Like I do think they should be genuinely better than they are. I don't think they're like a a gun team or anything, but their forward pack is pretty strong. Like it, I don't know. I feel like they shouldn't get blown out as much as they do, but I guess, I guess a lot of their forwards, they are getting on a bit still. Not too many like young guns coming in, but yeah, the Hame Sele inclusion is good. Leilua, I thought Leilua is actually pretty strong. Uh, a couple of games he's been back, and uh, obviously Benny Hunts has been solid. Lomax is a... Oh, he's a, he's a very enticing prospect, but I don't know if I'm going to be going him. There's some big moves to make. There's definitely some big moves to make, and Lomax is firmly in the picture of that. The Seagulls, okay, so yeah, Vega is still on the wing. I was sort of hoping that uh, Tommy Talia would be back and, and get the spot back, but he's not. The rest of it is as you would expect. Thankfully, Ben Trebojevic is still named to start. I, I, you know, I think he's been a little lackluster. I think he's been fine in NRL standings, though. So it's yeah, it would have been a bit harsh to drop him. Um, and then the bench is as you expect. Is uh, yeah, okay, so yeah, Tommy Talao is on the extended bench. So I mean, potentially he comes in. It would be very nice because like he scored well in his his first game because he did score a try. If he played this game, he would he you know he'd be a good cheapy downgrade next week, and he would still get a few weeks of of uh, of cash rises before Jason Saab comes back. So hopefully Talia comes in as a late inclusion, but I'm not holding my breath. I mean, there are a couple of other cheapies potentially popping up, so it's not. It's not the end of the world if he doesn't, but it would be nice. I mean, a manly winger with the way they're attacking, it, it would just be, oh, it could, it could be very, very juicy. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Then we have Titans Dolphins, another Queensland derby. <laughs> Titans Dolphins. I mean, fuck the Titans. Who have they got? So, okay, there, there are some big changes here. Jaden Campbell is back, which is beautiful to see. I, I fucking I love watching Campbell play. Like he not even for super coach reasons, because I think at this point, like, is yeah, there's too many like gun cheapy options in five eight and then it like potentially decent higher priced options. I think Campbell is he's past that. Um, I would have loved to have started with him if he played round one, but not to be. Um but just NRL wise, he's just so good to watch and I I, I'm still, I don't know what's best for the Titans, like Brimson in the centers, is that, is that good for them? I don't know, but I do love Campbell, and he's too good not to be playing fullback, so, I don't know, it's just a weird one, the Titans, they just need to, I think, they just need to move one of these guys on, and sign some more quality forwards, Honestly, I, I think that's the best case scenario. But at the time, you got to try to fit them all in. And uh, I do love seeing Campbell back. I mean, Brimson's been good in the centers, but I think he is wasted in the centers. Uh, Kieran Fawn's still there. Obviously, Tanner Boyd. Oh, fuck, I, I, 
I really do not like Tanner Boyd. Like, I don't know. If I can, I don't know. Move Kieran Four into seven and put Brimson into six. Like, Kieran Foran's a good controlling half. Like, he can do the job. Tanner Boyd doesn't do shit. <laughs> I don't understand it, but... Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, and then the forward pack, obviously, the big one, Tino, is out. I mean, that is... Oh, it's tragic, dude. It's tragic for the Titans, but more tragic for my Queensland brethren because that's a massive loss going into the uh, into the series. But, yeah, Keenan Palacea is... Uh, Starting at prop, I don't think he's too uh, pressing. I don't, I don't think you're gonna look to bring him in. He's been pretty shocking anyway. Uh, Jamin Jolliffe still 13. Cleese Haas still there. I did see Fafita was in, but he's obviously on the extended. So Fermor is still in the back row, probably on the left. And the back, uh, the the uh, interchange the same. So yeah, Fafita is 18th man at the moment. I mean, if he's good to go, he <clears throat> he will be a late inclusion. Like they have to play him. Like if he if he is nearing a hundred percent, they just have to bring him in. Like there's no other option. So yeah, look for a late change on that. I mean, it would be fucking beautiful if they brought him back off the bench and played him a few minutes. <laughs> but I don't know if he's good to go, he'll come straight back into the run side. They just have to do it. And then the, the dolphins, they are pretty much the same. I think obviously Wallace is out. Um, obviously I had the buy last week as well. So a few of these guys will be nice and fresh to pump the Titans. <laughs> well, I don't know this. Honestly, this is the game I can see the Titans getting up for and the dolphins like going off the boil like they just the dolphins are a bit all over the shop but they do have a i don't know looking at the team it's a pretty strong team honestly like it looks pretty good on paper the forward pack is a little bit yeah it's a bit iffy at times but it's it's not bad um felice fizzy you and aiken max plath the the cheapy i mean there's dude all of a sudden there's like too many cheapy 5-8 options like there's there's galvin there's ethan strange who luckily he can play sec uh center wing as well but then max plath annoyingly he's only 5 8 because he's only playing lock or back row in uh in super coach but uh he'll probably get the duel and he'll be a little bit too expensive to bring in so it's just what it is you gotta you gotta miss out on a couple of them uh josh kerr is obviously a bit of a potential trade-in I mean, he's going to make some good cash, but I think this week there's too many other big trades that I am looking to do. So getting a guy like Kurt in, if you got a luxury trade, sure. If you're trying to get rid of some dead wood in the front row, I think Kerr is actually a pretty okay pickup because he's playing good minutes. He's got a bit of attack in him and I don't see him really regressing. Obviously, he's not going to get attack every week, but... I think he is a guy that can make some decent cash, uh, bar, like other than like Sam Hughes and these other guys that are like going to stick around that 250, 300k mark for the rest of their goddamn careers. But um, yeah, Kerr, not a terrible uh, trade in. And then yeah, Donahue, Nichols, Stone, as you'd expect. Obviously, yeah, Sullivan's still out. I mean, Katoa was really good. I was I was very very impressed with Isaiah Katoa. Two weeks ago, I thought he was outstanding. Very, very good. He looked like he bulked up a bit in the offseason and, and looked a lot stronger in uh, in all facets. And, uh, yeah, good to see. Now we have the Warriors Knights. This is also potential interesting one. I mean, not really. I guess the big one, Tulpiki, is gone. Roger Tulvasek is gone back to fullback, which, I mean... I mean, it's more bad than good because, like, so, like most people have two of us check in the center wing, so it doesn't. I I guess if you don't have him, like, it it is nice for the people that do, but like most people do, and like Tua Picky was gonna make good cash last week. He's, he was gonna make good cash this week and potentially next week, but all of a sudden, chance he's gonna be back potentially next week. We don't know exactly yet, but. Oh, it just it just happened at the worst time for Tulpiki to to get uh, a head knock, but that's uh, that's footy, that's footy, and that's Supercoach. Unfortunately, uh, the rest of the back line, as you expect, Metcalf, 
I mean, he's still goal kicking. Like again, this like <laughs> there's now too many five eight options. But I mean, Metcalf, if you started with him, he's been going very well. But uh, there's just I don't know. There's too many five eight options at the moment. Uh, Sean Johnson, Fennel Blake, Wade Egan is back. Um, he was back last week and then was a late scratching. So we'll we'll see if <laughs> we'll see if he continues to to play. But it will be a it would be a massive in if he plays. Because I mean, I do. I have been very impressed with Egan since he's gone to New Zealand. Uh, back row, as you'd expect, near Corey. Was near Corey out last week? I feel like I didn't see him here. Uh, but Dylan Walker, Bunty Afua, and Freddie Lussick. Very strong, very strong team, the Warriors. And then the Knights, Leo Thompson with that one game. I think it was one game suspension, which I don't know. I'm not going to get too much into that. A bit, bit unlucky, but it, I mean, it, yeah. I mean, it's a danger. It is dangerous. So it is what it is. Um, other than that, not too much difference. Obviously, Cogger and Gamble. They won last week. It wasn't convincing, but they did win, so they weren't going to drop Gamble or Cogger for Hastings um, after one week and a win. Saifidi, well, both Saifidi start now with Thompson being out. Kai Pierce Paul is still starting in the back row, which is sensational. And, okay, Dylan Lucas has been dropped out of the 17, which is very strange, i got to say. Like... Yeah, that's very interesting. Brody Jones, I feel <laughs> I feel like Dylan Lucas is basically Brody Jones, but better. Like they're they're both sort of, you know, stocky, quick back rowers that can that can play center at a pinch. But Lucas is just better. Like I, I feel like he's just a better Brody Jones. I don't I don't really get why they would drop Lucas out of the seventeen, but that is that is fantastic news for Kai Pierce Paul and the fact that I picked him up last week, that is sensational. Uh, because yeah, I think he's, I think he's definitely locked in for 80 minutes, um, unless Brady Jones subs him. But I think he'll play through the middle, or he'll just play on the edge and and do what last week and Frizzell will go through the middle potentially as well. Um, will Price, I fuck, I would love, I would love to see Will Price. He is look sensational in uh, in New South Wales Cup, and uh, he was great in the trials at the moment. I mean, I guess there's not really a spot for him, but oh, he's, a, he's a damn good player. Very, very exciting player. I would love to see him in the team soon, but we'll uh, we'll have to wait on that one. Uh, but yeah, not too much else. Um, I mean, it'd be nice if, honestly, for Kalen Ponga owners, it'd be nice if Egan was probably out. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, it's a bit... Uh, the, the Warriors package is so strong. The Knights pack is a little bit mess. So I'm like... It's not great for Ponga owners. Just the, the go forward, I think, is going to be a bit of a struggle. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Sharks v Raiders. So there is quite a bit happening with the Sharkies. Um, yeah, Fanukin, Hunt, and Rudolph are all out. Uh, that means... So Kyle Iro, has, he, gets his, he gets his start in the centers, which a lot of people have been itching for. I'm, I'm very excited to see as well. Obviously, backline other than that is the same. Hazelton starts. I mean, I mean, I thought Hazelton was honestly as as like that 300k guy. Yeah, looking back, honestly, he should have just started with Hazelton. He was a little bit more expensive, but like off the bench, he just he just has so much more impact and and whatnot. I wouldn't again. I wouldn't be wasting a trade getting in Hazelton now. He's not going to keep the starting spot. Uh, I mean, I honestly, I think he probably should because he's, I, I think he's arguably the Sharks' best front rower, but probably not going to happen. But I do love him. I do love him as a player. Uh, see, Vitalikai moves into the back row, T. Wilton McInnes, and then you got Daniel Atkinson as the 14. I mean, again, he's he can play a few different positions, more half, but... He's definitely big enough to slot into the back row if needed and in the centers. Jack Williams back to the bench. Billy Burns and uh, Tapahu. Ta- Tapuha. He, w- he was actually sensational, his limited minutes the other game. Man, he looked like an absolute monster. Very, very exciting uh, big thing there. But, uh, but yeah, Jack Williams back to the bench, obviously. I've, I was very shocked to see him in the back row last week. It just... 
it's just strange. It's just strange. And then they have Billy Burns as well on the bench. I mean, I guess they, they're they missing a lot of forwards, so it, like, it makes sense to have, um, yeah, both of them in there. But yeah, strange. I mean, just remember, so people are potentially going to be interested in Eero and Talakai. I mean, I probably... I mean, Talakai is... A, he's a potential trade-in center or second row. I don't really think it makes too much of a difference. Like, I... I actually think it might be a little worse if he's playing in the forward pack because he'll make more tackles for sure, but he he'll probably he'll probably take a few less runs playing in the back row because he's going to be making more tackles. Like centers typically make more runs and make less. He sort of switches around, right? So I I don't necessarily think it's that much better for Talakai. It could even be a little bit worse if he's playing in the forwards. I know it always looks better having a center wing playing in your, your forward pack, but I think Talakai is a bit different where he... Like, he, he always makes a decent amount of tackles in the centers, and I think just having that one-on-one -on -one matchup against his opposition is just always... It's always nice. But I, yeah, I guess in saying that, the back rower does get to run at the halves, so he gets a nice little matchup against the smaller half. So, yeah, it's a bit it's a bit of one-on-one. -on -one. I, I don't think it really makes too much of a difference. But the Eero pickup, um, do, do not... If you started with Eero at the start of the season, you know, fair enough. Um, but do not trade an Eero this week because... Britton Nikara is back next week. This will be his second game suspension. And when Nikara is back, I mean... Obviously, he's going to go back into the back row. Talakai is going to go back to center. Like, they're not, they're not going to drop Teague Wilson. So, uh, unless, I mean, unless unless Eero has an absolute blinder and Talakai looks really good through the middle, maybe Talakai drops back to the bench and just becomes like a middle forward for them and Eero keeps his spot. But you, you just, you can just wait a week. Just wait a week on Eero to see what happens. But I would not be expecting that to happen. The Raiders, so Albert Hopawade is out and Emery Gula. So James Schiller comes in. Like, I I don't, I, I feel like every time Schiller plays in the trials or gets his crack in first grade, he always looks really good. But Ricky Shiller just never picks him. So I'm, I'm very interested to see how Schiller goes because, again, he's a cheapie. Uh, if he plays well, he could keep the spot. He's, a, he's one to watch. And I, just, I think he's a, I, I think he's a pretty damn good player. I, I think he, he's always got pretty good base. He loves taking a tough carry, a tackle breaker. Um, I mean, he's similar to a Nick Kotrick, but I just think he's a little bit better than Kotrick is, or, or quite a bit better than Kotrick is at this stage. Uh, then the rest of it's pretty standard. The forward pack, Hudson Young, Whitehead, Smithy still there. Uh, I guess the big one actually was, yeah, Corey Horsburgh is on the extended bench. So, wait and see if he comes straight back in. Yeah, we'll see. Obviously, Hosking is still on the bench, but, I mean, he played good minutes last week, so I wouldn't... I mean, if you picked him up last week, I mean, fair enough, but... I don't know. He's going to make more cash this week as long as he plays decent minutes. But yeah, watch. I mean, I guess if Horsburgh comes in, he'll probably just replace. I think he should play replace Solo because I think Mariotta has been very, very good. So yeah, it's a, it's a watch though because yeah, we'll see what happens when Horsburgh comes back. Smithies obviously has become a little bit of a issue. Well, not an issue, but he's definitely. He's gonna peak in price pretty soon. We were sort of hoping he would get to like. I don't know, yeah, 500k maybe, keep getting like 50, 55 points at, at, at least, but it looks like he's uh, tapering off a little bit, the minutes are dropping, but we'll see, I don't know, last week might have been a bit of an anomaly, but yeah, I don't know, I don't, I don't know, Smithies could be on the chopping block pretty soon, um, yeah, not not too much else to say, just to, just to watch on Horsburgh to see what, uh, see what happens with the, the big man, because I mean, surely he's... <laughs> Surely he's going to come back. Like he, it's not like he's been out injured. He was out suspended, so he'll uh, he'll be itching and raring to go in uh, in first grade. And then the final game on Monday, Parramatta Eels versus West Tigers. So again, some some big 
news out of Eels, which uh, with Mitchell Moses being ruled out. Also, I heard that um, Bryce Cartwright was was potentially gone for like up to a month, but looks like he's not at the moment. Uh, Mike Sivo comes back in. Honestly, is that even good for the Eels? I don't, I don't know. I think Sivo is an absolute myth of a player, but <laughs> if he's fired up, he can have a good game, but We'll see. We'll see. Is, is going to be a fired up Sevo to start? I mean, he's been out suspended. Surely he's been a, he's been revved up a little bit to to come out strong in this one. Uh, Penasini Harper, Russell, Blaze Talangi goes into the six jersey with Dylan Brown in the seven. So that is, I honestly I was expecting Brendan Hands to probably go into the halves, but yeah, the young kid Blaze Talangi. I mean he. He had he had his issues last week, but he also had some very good moments, and he he looked like a he looked like a player with some talent. So exciting! It looks like an exciting halves pairing of Talangi and Brown. Be interesting to see how his kicking game is, because I, I I mean Brown is he's decent. He's got a decent boot on him, but it's no Mitchell Moses. So yeah, it's gonna be a it is gonna be a huge loss not having Mitch Moses. I think. As much as much shit as we give Moses, he is like he's surprisingly he's actually a very good defender now. Uh, and then also he's got arguably the best long kicking game in the comp. Like he he's got a monster boot on him, and it just I mean having that long kick is just so valuable because it can turn like a pretty poor set into a potentially very good set if the kick chase is good. So. Big uh, big watch there to see how the kicking game is. And then, yeah, Joey Lustig obviously still there. Sean Lane, Car- yeah, Cartwright is named, apparently. <laughs> I, I'd be, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the latest is, but I guess keep an eye on late mail there. They have replacements. I mean, Kalma Tuolangi, I would assume, would go into the back row. I mean, you got Madison, but I think they like using Madison in the middles. But uh, yeah, they've they've got plenty of replacements for Bryce Cartwright, and then the Tigers. So Alex Twal is out with that. Uh, what was it? Head knock, I think. Uh, Dream Bula Fatape is obviously still there, but um, how long is he there? I I don't know. I is he gonna? Is his price changing this week? I'm not. I can't remember. I think it is actually. So uh, you could jump on Fatape. I'm not overly convinced. I mean, his scoring has been pretty poor, and also I just don't like the job security. So I, I think he's one of these cheapies that I'm probably just gonna let go through. Because I honestly, I I know the Tigers were sensational. The Sharks were obviously poor, but the Tigers, you got to give them props. They were very very good. But I I think the Eels are gonna. Well, I mean, the Eels without Moses, obviously a big loss, but I still think the Eels have enough in them here. Bit too much quality. Well, I don't... Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Olam, Olam was sensational. I thought, you know, obviously he hadn't been in the best of form at the Storm the last couple of seasons, but, man, he looked... He looked really good. Like, just his presence in defense, I think, is massive. Like, the Tigers have just lacked that that guy in defense that can just put pressure on and just, just hit and stick. And he was great. I, th- I thought Olam was, was absolutely outstanding. I mean, I saw... Fuck, when, it ha- when the signing happened, people were people were questioning the signing. But I was... I In my head, I was like, that is a great signing. Olam is a guy that you know is going... He's not going there... Obviously for a, for a pay, but he's a guy that's going to give his hundred percent. Like he is a guy that you know he's going to put in when he's on the field. So I, th- I thought it was a fantastic signing, and he was very good last week. Lucky Galvin is, I mean, <laughs> he's looking impressive. I got, I got to be honest. In the trials, when people just kept talking about him, I was, I was starting to get a little bit like, uh, are we really talking him up that much from the trials? But I got to be, eat my words a little bit. He he has been sensational in the opening couple of games. Uh, looked very good out there, defensively for a young kid, solid taking the line on. I mean, yeah, there's there's some very very good signs from the young kid. I think. I, I still question why... I mean, obviously, yeah, Caesar was in a little bit of doubt in that round one, but he was still picked 
and then he also came on the field. I just don't understand why he wasn't there to start. He just has that calmness about him. He's got a great kicking game, and I thought he was very solid last week. I mean, the Tigers, you know, they have to back it up now. They, they were very good last week, but they can't just go like the fucking Dragons and go on, off, on, off. You know, hopefully they can continue, not necessarily like win back to back to back or anything like that, but just, just keep performing. Like, that's it. You know, we're not, no one's expecting this Tigers team to make the top eight, really. But if they just keep putting in, there's some, there's some good signs going forward for the, for the Tigers, I think. Obviously, Apicorosia, sensational. The forward pack, the forward pack was a lot better than it was the previous week, which was good. I mean, it's on paper, it's a pretty strong forward pack, but yeah, the, yeah, it's, uh, they just have to do that every week. I mean, the forward pack is where it should be a lot more solid, but it's been a bit of a letdown lately, so we'll see. And then uh, Asu Kepaoa is on the bench for... Who's he on the bench for? I guess Alex Twal, actually. Uh, which I think is actually pretty good because he covers a few positions as well. They still got Jaden Sullivan on the bench. Where I, I, I don't know. I guess he comes on. He can play a dummy half. He can play in the half. So it's it's fine, I guess. Um, Seifarth and Finu has been very good. Latu Finu, obviously another young kid, has been very good in the New South Wales Cup. On the extended there, I mean... <laughs> I don't know. We'd, I feel like you just blood Finu and put him in the 14 jersey, right? Like, I mean, I know they signed Sullivan on pretty good money, but Finu is the future. Like, just give him give him the experience. Like, he he's not asked to do a whole lot from the 14 unless there's a resting for Coruscant or an injury. He can come on, but, you know, maybe, maybe he's a little raw at the moment. But other than that, like... Should be a good game. I'm I'm excited to see it. Obviously, Eels aren't at their full strength, but I still think it's a, it's a very strong team across the park. Um, Tigers coming off a big win. Pfft, I don't know. I mean, the, the Eels are obviously going to be favourites, and I'm probably going to tip with the favourites here, but I could see the Tigers getting an upset. I could definitely see it without uh, Mitch Moses in this team. But, uh, but yeah, that's the wrap-up. I mean, there's there's a lot of uh, moving parts. There's going to be some big decisions to make. And I got some I got some juicy trades planned. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the team list reaction. Make sure to like and comment, and I'll see you guys in the next one.